All right, guys. So we're starting this vlog with some Inception. I'm filming Daniel, filming me. This is really fucking me up right now. Inception. All right, we're good. Uh, what's up, guys? <laughs> so I just got back from my bachelor party weekend, and it was fucking awesome. But seriously, it was like the best weekend I've had in a long time. I just needed to like to reset, recharge, relax. Some highlights of the weekend. We went ATVing. It was really fun. Um, I haven't been ATVing in like literally like since I was 14 years old, so that was awesome. Me and Kirsten did a joint steg slash stegette. So we got to like basically spend the day with the boys. She spent the day with the girls, and then we meet up at night and we would do fun things. And my cameraman Daniel projectile vomited all over himself. Definitely the highlight. Actually, of the not on myself. Everywhere it's else. On though. himself. He's Everywhere lying. else, he's no, not he's lying. So those are the highlights of the weekend. So get, guys, whenever I get back from my vacation, my thing is that like I need to get back into momentum right away. So uh, I woke up this morning at 3:15. I tried to set my alarm for 3:15, and my body was like, "Not a fucking chance, bro." So I ended up getting up at four. I uh, did my meditation, did my affirmations, did my gratitudes, posted my content, and now I'm at the gym. Just finished up my workout, and me and Dan are gonna do some skits. So. Today at 1 p.m. PST, we are finishing off the documentary, which is super exciting. For the last few months, we've been basically working on this like iron energy documentary and we're bringing it all together today. We're talking about the storyline from 1 to 3 p.m. And I'm gonna catch some of that in the vlog as well. So stay tuned, more coming. Hey, it's Brian. I'm gonna turn on my car, I want you guys to hear it. Ready? This is Dax. Hellcat, supercharged, let's fucking go. Okay guys, so on the way to film the documentary and whenever I'm in the car, I'm always doing, uh, I basically try to do two birds, one stone. So whenever I'm in the car, I always try to do like a call or something. So I'm currently in the car and I'm gonna call and hire a coach. You guys are gonna hear it. Her name is Christine Cardenas. I command you to call. Here we go. Hello. Um, I'm calling you because I would like to officially uh, invite you to be a leader inside of the mastermind starting today. Would you look at that? I would love that. Would you fucking look at that? I'll draft up like a like a document, but it won't be anything other than the expectations we've already talked about. Everything we talked mm -hmm. about on the phone, I'll send it over to you. And um, yeah, dude, let's get you into the mastermind today. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'll bring you in and then I'll make a post about your transformation working with me. I will add you into the group today. I'm super fucking excited. Uh, I know the students are gonna love you and that's freaking, that's all I gotta say unless you wanna, you know, tell me how good of a coach I am or anything like that. <laughs> uh, you're the best. Brian, Thank you. Mark. Um, have the best day of your life. I will add you into the group later. Uh, can you send me your stats? So Instagram following, how many clients did you have when you first started and uh, like what was your like income at when you first started? And then uh, mm -hmm. Instagram following now, how many clients do you have now and your record month? And then I'm gonna make a big post about you in the community and introduce you as one of the authorities. Okay, sounds good. Okay, have the best day of your entire life and I will talk to you soon. You too. Okay, bye, Extina. Bye. 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 And just like that, we have a new coach. Um, so basically inside of my coaching business right now, inside of the 10K Coaching Academy, there are five coaches, there's two assistant coaches, and we've got eight leaders. So there's a lot of people that are helping out with all the first students getting awesome results. Now inside of the mastermind, right now we have four coaches. So we have me, Don Lamb, who's making $125,000 a month. Uh, we have Natasha Charcheski, who runs the virtual assistance business, and we have Cole. So it's four head coaches, and I want to bring in one leader because the mastermind is growing, and I want to provide more support, and I want to make sure that any question that ever gets asked inside of my coaching group always is answered promptly by like two people that know what the fuck they're doing. So Christine uh, is super smart, super knowledgeable, and she is very willing to give back, and I think that's super important. I think as a, like a mentor for coaches, like I found that through working with uh, students that there are some students that like take what I have to like give them, and then they almost just take it selfishly, and they're just like, oh, I'm fucking doing my own thing. I'm like that's it, and they're out, and that's cool. Like, but there's some coaches that take what I have like I've given them like in terms of like growing my business and learning how to like start their own movement and then they want to give back to the community and I fucking love that because I'm that type of person like I want to give back and I want to contribute like in my mentorship program like I'm always down to give back and so in, inside of PT Dom basically what I look for is like when I help a student change their life 
and they express interest in me and like helping me help my students like I fucking love that so Christine has actually reached out before and asked to be a coach and we uh, it took us like a, a six months to say yes but we're gonna start out at a leadership position and then see if she likes it um, she's gonna be in the mastermind group answering questions helping out with the community and then if it goes really well then we'll continue to progress we'll move forward and we will take it from like leadership all the way to head coach so or not head coach right leadership to coach it's like the next level um, so yeah, it starts with a leadership position and if she likes it and our students like her and we're getting along Then eventually if she's interested in it, then uh, I hire her to be a coach and she runs her own business uh, And also just helps out with the mastermind. So yeah Get that lighting dialed in hey boys. How's this? Good. You sit in one of those this first time? Sorry. Yeah Hi oh, Alex. Yeah, oh yeah Coming, piggy. Fuck you, bro. Pigs eat fucking bones too, bro. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> Those are pig noises. In case you guys didn't know what I was doing. Did you ever watch the uh, Mike Tyson Vander Holyfield fight? Yeah, I know what the fuck you're saying. Did you fit his fucking ear off? Yeah, that's what pigs do. Exactly. Yeah. Can't get enough donuts. You also had to get some ear. Yeah, exactly. I need some protein, <laughs> bro. What's up guys, my name is Cole DeSelva, I'm one of the owners at Iron Energy. Okay, I got a good question. You Being as know. young as you are, I'm sure that you deal with like criticism and negative feedback uh, from your, cause like, you know, like do you deal with any criticism or negative feedback? How do you handle the criticism and feedback that comes with owning a gym at such a young age? Honestly, when it comes down to dealing with the negative feedback being so young and being a gym owner, um, I just try to cut out as much as I can. I've been getting that forever. I've, a bunch of people usually have that mentality, right? Where, oh, you're young, you don't know anything. You're young, you don't know what it's like to own a gym, or you shouldn't be owning a gym, or you shouldn't have a business, or you shouldn't be doing these things because you don't have any life experience. And honestly, um, I always say it, and a bunch of people who actually know me personally understand it, that I've already lived a full life by the time I was like 16 to 17 years old. I left my house at 14, I've been through things that people can't even fucking imagine. So, people can have their opinions, people can have like criticism based off the fact that I now own a gym at 27 years old and we have another company as well and everything's thriving. Um, but I just block out as much as I can because I've already lived through things that people can't even imagine. Um, I think one of the biggest struggles that I personally had uh, was being a single mom. Until um, I was with Brett, I was a single mom for a lot of years. Um, I had pregnant half the time. Um, but being that I was working full time, I was working crazy amount of hours before, um, I was trying to prioritize myself and my fitness. Um, I had been competing and doing all of these things. I think the biggest thing for me was like being a single mom, trying to like figure out what I wanted to do literally when I grew up, trying to run businesses and trying to like overcome like how that like home life balance worked and I guess this has like really turned into my passion is being able to empower and inspire women to be the best version of themselves how to prioritize themselves and not put themselves second how being a good like leader for your family all starts with being a leader for yourself some of the biggest struggles I had to face honestly was moving into the online space with the little lack of knowledge that I have to move into social media that's where I hired Brian Mark honestly he's become a best friend he's a great influence in the industry and he's not he's all he's literally not not all talk, he's all action. So the guy goes all in on everything, which I'm very similar mindset. So we vibe very, very well. And he allowed my business to really drive through. And if I rewind a little bit on that, before I went into the online space, I didn't have a path. I was just knew I had a gift and an idea and and what I was very good at, but the struggles I overcame was how to get my message out to the audiences without you know watering down my product, but staying firm in who I am. And not being an influencer in the space, but being an icon in the space, and somebody that people could look up to, so that we can deliver them the knowledge and the passion in the industry that people needed to hear, not the watered down version, the fucking authentic that side that people need to really hear, the real raw material. And that's what really allowed Phoenix to prosper, allowed us to move into this, this position that we have with financial, to move into the gym, with a team and a family that we love to have this energy with. What's going on guys, my name is Brian Mark and I'm one of the owners here at Iron Energy Gym. 
Now, give us a bit of background about yourself, how you got started in fitness, maybe touch on what you did before fitness. Cool. And, uh, yeah. Um, so for me, fitness, like, I fell in love with fitness when I was 13 years old. Uh, my family, um, when I was younger, we didn't really have good exercise or eating habits. For me personally, <clears throat> I didn't play any sports when I was younger, and so I got into fitness when I was like 13 years old. Uh, I just stepped on the scale for the first time when I was 13, and I was like 50 pounds heavier than I wanted to be, so I started going for runs, exercising, eating right, and from that point, I just fell in love with it. So um, my goal in life was to be a pro athlete, and by the time I got to like 18, 19, I realized that I, that just wasn't gonna happen. Uh, and even if it did happen, I wasn't gonna make a lot of money, so I just stayed working out, um, stayed like just on my fitness game, and uh, I started bartending part time. So yeah, that's went into bartending for a little bit. Um, that was a few years, and obviously for bartending, um, it's like fun at first uh, when you're in the nightclub scene, but you can get like carried off on the wrong path very easily. So I was hanging out with people that were partying all the time. I was partying all the time, drinking, turned into drugs. I uh, had a serious addiction and then uh, that was when I basically decided to cut myself off from everything, isolate myself and start working uh, back on my fitness goals. So it's like a brief little backstory. That's a wrap that brings us to the end of my second vlog. And I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Uh, it's actually like nerve wracking for me to put this type of content out because I've never really done content like this before. And so if you're enjoying the vlog, uh, if you're getting value from it, please hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And again, I appreciate your support so much, fam. So I'll see you next week on weekly vlog number three. I'll talk to you guys soon. Let's go.